Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and on this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how super easy it is to do glass etching. Um, we're, I'm going to tell you about where to get some glass to practice, I'm going to give you a ton of ideas of different things that you can do, and I'm going to give you a few words of caution. So, it should be fun. And my guess is that you're going to be wanting to do some glass etching this week after you see this video. Okay, I am going to be using this brand of glass etching cream. This is called Armor Etch. I've used a lot of different brands, um, but this is just what we're using today. It came from Hobby Lobby, and it was $6.99, and one bottle of this is going to go a long ways. But if you have another brand, I mean, you can use, I think etching cream is pretty universal. You can use what you have. It doesn't have to be this particular brand. Okay, and then um, to practice, I went to my local Goodwill and I picked up some glass pieces. So I picked up four of these glasses. I think it was four for $1.29 or something. They're not fancy, but they're great. And here's the thing. If you're going to be etching on drinking glasses and you're going to be using an all-over pattern, which is what we're going to be doing, then your glass needs to be as straight as possible. It can't, like, have a curve, okay? If you're using teeny tiny little stencils, then you can do uh, etching on things that have a curve. Otherwise, you want it to be as flat, straight up and down as possible. And this has a little bit of an angle, but it works. Okay, so I have three that I've already done that I'll show you in just a minute. But you're also, I mean, you can also look for uh, just glass pieces, like faces, like this. Um, I got these at Goodwill today because I wanted to show you something. And um, I think I paid $1.29 a piece, okay? And then you'll need whatever stencils you want to use. And MagnoliaDIY.com has a huge selection of all over pattern stencils. We're going to be using this one today. We're also going to be using this one. This is called Lemon Pattern, but we're not going to use my brand new one because here's a tip. And I have a brand new one of this. Uh, well, maybe I don't have it out. But anyways, uh, the tip is you want to use, if possible, stencils that have been uh, used a few times. Because when you apply a stencil on glass, it really adheres. And if it's a brand new stencil, when you're trying to pull it off, you may stretch it. So, you're either going to want a super fuzz, 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 a newer stencil like this, or you're going to want to use something that looks like this, or this, I used these, or this. These are all stencils of mine that I love and I've used a lot, and they're a great investment because uh, you can keep using them for a long time to come, but the older uh, the better. So instead of using this brand new one, we're going to use this, which is the same stencil, but I cut it up for a specific project last year. And um, it is a little easier to work with this if you do it in pieces. And then I haven't decided yet for this other glass, but we'll, we'll decide. Um, and like I said at the beginning, this is Armor Etch. It came from Hobby Lobby. It was $6.99. As you guys are hopping on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle all that good stuff. Okay, this was the first glass from the glasses that I got at, at Goodwill that I etched. And I used the All Over Daisy pattern. And it had only been used maybe twice. So it was a little bit challenging to get it off the glass when I was done. And this is where I learned two things. I learned that the, the older stencils 
are a little easier to work with. Um, I also learned that you don't need to use very much etching cream. And I'll show you where I learned that. You can see I have a couple places where I got it on really thick. And it went under the stencil and just kind of ran. Um, now, I'm going to still use this. I'm going to put it in my kitchen. We'll still use it. Um, but if I was giving it as a gift, I would count this as my practice. All right, I also made this one today. And this is this adorable lace and berry stencil. I mean, it's super cute. And I did a good job on this one. Isn't that cute? All right. And, then, and I'll try to get close-ups. It's hard. And then I also did this one using the leopard, which looks like this right now. I'll show you what it looks like when it's new. It comes in this set that you just cut in half. There's the dog paws and the leopard prints or spots or whatever. That is a great all over pattern. So look how cute that is. I personally don't think that they all your glasses need to match. I think it's fun to have a variety. Um, maybe have all your glass shapes be similar, be straight up and down and then do a variety. It's totally up to you. But if you were making this as a gift, you just want your your glassware to be straight not curvy. You want to um, use stencils that are not quite as sticky as brand new or fuzz, 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 fuzz. And um, yeah, those are my tips. Okay, so we I have two uh, vases that we're going to work on and we're going to do this glass. Okay, let's start with the vases. Let's start with this little one. Before I came live, I etched this using bits and pieces of this lemon stencil that I had cut up for a project last year. And you know what? It is, this is a stencil that is easier to use in pieces. So I did one at a time. I did the front, the back, this side, and we're going to finish up this side right here. And I'm just going to show you the basics. And then we'll do this other one, which is beautiful. Oh my gosh. And, um, and just lay it on a tea towel Ooh, and let's see I really just need a couple little pieces let's use let's use this okay um, I am gonna fuzz it because I haven't used this a ton, but, and I'm not using the whole entire thing. I'm going to lay it on my project. And push it down and I'm gonna hold this up for you to see. Okay, so obviously we're not doing the whole lemon right here, slice. We'll do this and then we'll do part of this stuff here. Okay, so step one, shake your etching cream. Uh, don't be afraid of this stuff. You can use it indoors. Don't, don't dip your fingers in it and lick your fingers. Don't rub it on your face or on your hands. Um, and don't like spend an hour sniffing it, but it's pretty um, harmless for the most part. If you get a little on your hands, just wash them with soap, seriously. I know when I first started doing glass etching, I was kind of afraid of it. And then I learned that there's nothing to be afraid of. Your etching cream is gonna be kind of thick and it's gonna have a few little lumps in there. And I'll hold this up to my camera in just a minute and show you. You can kind of hear I have a stiff brush from Dollar Tree that I'm using. You can kind of hear as I'm going over my stencils, the sound of this on the glass. You 
don't want to go outside of your stencil because whatever glass this stuff comes into contact with, it's going to etch it. And um, if it's not on a stencil, it'll just look kind of fuzzy. Okay, can you guys hear? That's the glass etching cream doing its thing. And I just want to make sure that I have it covered thoroughly. Oops, did I go out of the balance there a little bit? Yes, I did. And um, that I pulled off so it's not super thick on there. Okay? And then I'm going to pull this off. And I'm going to look to see, I'm going to throw this in a little tub of water over here. I'm looking at my piece to see where did I go outside of my bounds a little bit. I did. I'm just going to wipe that off. Okay. We are going to let this sit for at least five minutes. Um, you can let it sit for longer than that if that's more convenient for you. It doesn't have to be on there a super long time to work. Okay, and this is what it looks like. In the past, I've done a lot of etching here on this page. In the past, I've had people tell me, oh my gosh, it looks so good with the etching cream, but as soon as I washed it off, it disappeared. And it kind of does. It looks like it's disappeared, but then when it's dry, your pattern will come back, and it's going to look like this. It won't look like this anymore, because you'll watch it be washing this cream off after it's done its thing. All right, so let's just set this aside for a minute and let's talk about this one. Oh my gosh. I have, my hydrangeas are blooming like crazy in our yard and so today I'm going to go out and cut some blooms off that are falling over because um, they're so heavy and I'm going to fill this up with water and just put a huge bouquet of hydrangeas in here. So this this was a uh, $1.29 or something at Goodwill. It was probably a vase that some flower arrangement was delivered in. There's nothing fancy about it, but it does have these straight lines. And before I came live, let me find it. Before I came live, I used my well-loved flower power stencil to do the front and one side. You guys. Look how amazing that looks. This was this is my best effort so far. And I have no idea why it turned out so good, but it really did. Now I'm going to lay the stencil on this side and stencil this side too. Let me scooch back just a little bit. But I'm not going to really try to match the pattern up at the seams. Um, I don't think you'll be able to tell. And so, uh, I like to start with the edge of where your stencil is, right at the bottom of your piece. So you're etching all the way down. And then I want to make sure that I have enough. Nope, I need to go over further. Enough to do. how this has turned out so far. So I'm pressing it down there and then I'm going to smooth it out on this side and I'm really getting my stencil on here as snug as I can and getting all the air bubbles out. And this is what it looks like. I'll put my hand inside of it when it's time to move it. Okay. So, just making sure. 
sure that it feels smooth. I'm going to use the same brush. I'm going to put my glasses on. And I'm going to start at the edges. The side edge and the top. I'm going to get those areas covered first. You can probably hear it doing its thing. So if you should happen to get some of this on your hands, just wash them pronto. If you should happen to get some of this in your eyes, I would start immediately rinsing your eyes with cool water. I've never had that happen and I've etched a zillion different things. But, um, I suppose it could happen. That would be the only really not great situation because just getting a little bit of it on your hands isn't a killer. You just want to get it off. Okay, so I've got the etching cream around the edges and I'm brushing it a little bit but mostly just to make sure I've covered every single bit and that I don't have it on super thick anywhere. And maybe you noticed that I'm not using a squeegee. It's easier with this type of a project to use a stiff brush. Okay, so this is what I've done on this part. And now I'm just gonna flip it over and let's do this side. And we'll figure out what we're gonna do with the glass and I'm gonna show you how to, how to clean these off. You can, by the way, let your project sit with the stencil on it if you want. But for me personally, I just like to take it off um, as soon as I'm done covering it because then I can see, are there places where I, oops, went outside of my bounds and I can try to wipe that off before the cream does very much etching in those areas that it wasn't supposed to be. And um, this stuff works pretty quickly. I usually, I mean, I'll wait between five minutes and an hour, <laughs> depending on what I'm doing or how um, impatient I'm feeling to see my project, but you don't have to, um, you don't have to rush to get it off. Okay. What do you guys think so, so far? This piece right here is seriously amazing. I'm so glad I bought this. Um, look how beautiful. Okay, let me throw this in my little tub over here. And here is a, an observation. I have noticed that sometimes when my stencils are starting to be a little not sticky at all and feel like they're a little clogged. I have found that the etching cream, in kind of a weird way, it almost removes some of that and it almost um, can reinvigorate a stencil. Okay, I'm just going to take this off of the lip here. And Hold it up so you can see. There are a few areas where I got a little heavy on the corners, but that's hard to avoid. Look, look how beautiful that is. This is the part that I've already done. 
This is the most beautiful stencil. I had a little poll this morning asking people which stencil do they like better. Do they like this brand new butterfly pattern? Do they like this brand new daisy pattern? Or do they like or do they like the oh the stencil that I just used on this one, which is called Flower Power. And I was surprised. <laughs> Way more people like the Flower Power than the other two. It's a great stencil. So let's set that aside for a minute and let's think about this other glass that I still have to etch. Let me look at my pile and see what would be good. Let's use this. This is called Retro Flower. I've had it for a good while. It's a little sticky, but not, not horribly. So I'm going to fuzz it just a little bit. And I'm going to show you when you're doing something like a glass, where you could do it all at one shebang, I'm going to show you how I deal with the start and the stop. Okay. I need to wash my fuzzing towel because it's got a lot of fuzz that's <laughs> putting on my stencil. Okay, so I'm going to start um, at the area where the pattern starts. And I'm just going to start sort of rolling it onto itself and pulling it. And smoothing out the bubbles. Okay, let's go to the other side. Um, if you had a brand, brand new stencil, this might be where you could get your two pieces stuck together. But if you're just patient, you can work them and get them unstuck. Okay, so I've come to the point where I'm going to merge the two. Because this is an older stencil, it'll be easy to get it apart. I'm just making a good start and stop there. And this is what it looks like. And um, these glasses are a little challenging because they're so skinny. But I like to work with my hand in the glass like this. <laughs> Can you etch, etch on stainless steel? This is glass etching cream. So um, this is for glass etching. And I know that sounds like I'm not answering your question. I don't know if you can etch on stainless steel. But I don't think you would use glass etching cream to etch on steel if you could do that. You would probably need, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I would think that you would need the product that is for stainless steel because this is for glass. And it basically is eating into the top layer. It's scratching or eating or removing the top layer of your, your glass. So that's what it's looking like. So go down for just a second and twist my hand a little bit so I can look at a different area. So if you've never worked with these green stencils, they are amazing. And my personal belief is that the all over pattern stencils are the best investment in your crafting closet. Because you can use them for so many different things and um, you can stencil on wood, on fabric, on t-shirts, tea towels, you can use it on glass. Um, you can just do a ton of different things with these all over pattern stencils. And they're not tied to any specific occasion or season. But you can make them seasonal 
uh, in the shapes that you're putting them on and the colors that you use. So I think that's super nice. Okay, we're getting there. I'm going to show you when I get to the end of this what I'm going to do. super thick anymore. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carefully, just one hand, separate my two sides and you can see right here where the pattern isn't matching up. So I'm going to use this one and I'm just going to pull it over just a smidge further Try to push it down, and I'm just going to go a little bit further over on my stencil. And it's not going to match up perfect, but it looks better than what I had before. So let me take this off and throw it in my little tub over here. And here is our project. Looks great. I do see a couple places where I have some big globs. I'm going to pull off just a little bit. Looks great. Okay, so this will do its thing for about five to five minutes to however long you want to wait. Um, let me get a Clorox pipe. Do my hands really good, and then I'm going to show you in this how to clean the, um, the etching cream off. The, the bigger pieces I'll take to my kitchen sink and I'll do the exact same thing as what I'm going to show you in this tub. But my tub has stencils in it too, so it's a little, a little awkward. Hey, do you guys remember when we made this tea towel? This is one of my cute ones still in my kitchen that my husband hasn't ruined yet. Do you need to do any special cleaning of your stencils? after using them with etching cream. No, I just sprayed them off. Good. And in the places where there was a, I could see it still on the stencil, I put a teeny bit of dish soap on my stencil cleaning sponge and I just went over it like this and it comes right off. Then you lay it on your counter. You can put it on top of a towel if you want. Sticky side up to dry. And that's it. And there's there's no real special complicated anything to cleaning uh, your stencils once you have used uh, etching cream on them. So let me bring this over. This is my tub that has the, um, the stencils that I've used in here. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you how to clean this off. Okay, what I have done in my sink is I will get a paper towel and put a little bit of dish soap on it and get it wet. And then I'm just going to actually wipe the cream off to start. And then I just used a kitchen sponge to clean the rest of that off and make sure that it isn't, that I didn't miss it anywhere. And that's it. 
I mean, it's so super simple. So let me dry this off and show it to you. And then I will get pictures of the, um, of the other pieces up close. But um, if you want to do a glass etching project, I recommend that you use an all-over pattern. Um, I just think you get the best result that way. Trying to remember which side was it. I think it was this side. Here's the whole thing. Turned out really good. You could put flowers in it, um, which is what I'm going to do with this big one. Look how amazing this is going to be once I clean it off. Uh, or I was thinking, I'm a paper lover, so I like paper napkins and stuff. And this is just what I grabbed. It was easy. You could just have this on your counter with some cute yellow, since this is lemon, yellow napkins in it. Um, okay, your, your glasses are dishwasher safe. They, if they could handle being in the dishwasher before, they can handle the dishwasher after you've done glass etching to them. Um, if they could handle having a warm or hot liquid in them before, then they can handle that now. Uh, so it really doesn't change anything about the glass, except for the outward appearance where it's etched, but you can still use it the same, you can still clean it the same, you can still put it in the dishwasher. And that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. So I hope, let me just throw this over here. I hope um, that you saw, seriously, how easy this is. I mean, it is so super simple. And um, if you are thinking that you might want to give it a go, then uh, let me know if you want a link, and I'll get you a link to the stencils, and you can look. There's probably 15 different all-over pattern stencils, and um, you can use, like, this. This, for example, this beautiful one right here is my Victorian pattern. This is my relatively new one. Here's my one that I've had for over two years and I've used it a bazillion times. It still works great, it just looks terrible. So these are reusable many, many, many times over several years. Um, they lose a little bit of their stick, but they still work. And they get a little stained, but they still work. So if you wanna look at stencils, um, just let me know and I'll get you a link. And then you can get these different brands of etching cream at any craft store. Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's. Um, I haven't seen it at Dollar Tree, at Walmart in the craft section. So you can get that everywhere. And you can etch anything that is glass. I've also had people tell me that they have etched on glass mirrors. I haven't tried that, but um, that is a possibility too. So I see lots of people asking for a link and I'm gonna give you a link um, to a page that has about eight or 10 of the pattern stencils. And then I'm gonna give you a link to a page that has all of the, pa all of the stencils that Magnolia has. Cause I don't want you to miss anything. And you can just um, take your time and look through those and see what appeals to you. And yes, after this is all finished up, I will go outside and cut some hydrangeas and um, bring them in the house and I'll get some pretty pictures of them in this and probably I'll put some in this too. Alrighty. No, the etching cream, this etching cream did not come from Magnolia. They don't have that product yet. Um, maybe they will in the future, I don't know. So. Okay, I see lots of people asking for links. So did I put that on and then rub it? I put it on with a brush. 
And then I just pull the stencil off, you let it sit for at least five minutes up to an hour or whatever works for you. And then you rinse it off and it will have extra glass. But I use a brush to apply it. And if you miss the beginning and you want to know how to do this technique, as soon as I'm finished, uh, which will be just a minute or so, um, you can watch this video on replay from the start and you'll see everything there is to see about doing it. And you'll hear all my tips of what to do and what not to do. Okie dokie. You guys have a blessed rest of your day. Thanks for joining me. I hope to see you tomorrow here at DIY Dreaming for some more projects that are going to be super quick and easy. You don't have to be an expert crafter. Etching cream won't hurt the stencils, no ma'am. In fact, it may help your stencils, but do make sure you get them cleaned out, sprayed off quickly. Um, so my, my projects here are going to be quick and easy. They're going to be sometimes a little different. They're going to be affordable, like this is all glass from Goodwill. They're going to be uh, mostly flowers. Well, faith, family, or flowers focused. And what's the last thing? I don't know. I can't think of what the last thing is. But I really do try to mix things up every day. So I would love to see you here again tomorrow and the next day. And you can come back anytime you want and click on the videos tab. And you can just start looking through my list of videos for something you might want to watch. I have over three years worth of videos. And I am very particular in labeling them. So you can find something from two years ago, three years ago. I mean, almost up to four years ago and know what you want to watch. So, okie dokie. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you guys later.